Hi everyone, welcome back to the podcast. This is the Art of Business English where we help people like you get the language skills you need for doing business in English. Today I've got the second part in my three-part mini-series on prepositional phrases, actually three word prepositional phrasal verbs uh, which end in a specific preposition and today's preposition is the preposition to. Okay, so uh, if you haven't checked out the first episode in this mini-series, then go back, it's episode 198. You can find it in your podcast feed or you can grab all the information over at the website, theartofbusinessenglish.com. Okay, let's see what we've got here for you today. Now remember, any verb that follows a preposition needs to be in the gerund or ing form. So if something, if there's a structure with two and then the next word in that sequence is a verb, it should be ing. So let's start learning. Now the first one on my list today is leave up to. This basically means to give someone the responsibility to do something. For example, you could say, we'll leave it up to the accountant to decide how to invest the money. So basically, you know, you're leaving the responsibility up to them. Now the next one is very similar in pronunciation, so be careful. Well, it is to live up to, so L-I-V-E. Live up to is not the same as leave up to. So live up to means to achieve what is expected. So for example, we could say something like, the new employee didn't live up to expectations and HR decided not to renew her contract. So this means that the employee wasn't as good as maybe people expected they were or they would be. All right, the next one on my list is set out to set out to. This basically means to start an activity with a particular aim or objective. So he set out to design software that would be accessible to employees outside the accounting department. So they started out and the objective was to develop this software for other departments within the company. Okay, the next one on my list is face up to. To face up to. Now to face up to means to accept that a difficult situation exists. Many people don't like to face up to reality, for example, and the reality is maybe something difficult. So for example, you could say, everyone needs to face up to the fact that this quarter's sales results are a complete disaster. All right, another one is get round to. So to get round to is to find the time to do or deal with something. For example, I finally got round to writing the financial report. It was something that you had to do, but you couldn't find the time. And so you say, I finally got round to writing the financial report. Look forward to. Now, look forward to. This is always followed by a gerund. Remember, you can look forward to something. So a noun, I'm looking forward to the party. Or if it's it's a uh, verb, you would say, I'm looking forward to going to the party. So the verb is in gerund. And the meaning is to be excited about the fact that an event or activity is going to happen or is happening. So an example, I am looking forward to a nice quiet holiday next month. We are going to the Bahamas. So maybe the person's very busy and they've got a lot of work. So you know the future thing is that they're looking forward to going on a holiday as they are going to the Bahamas. Look up to. Now, it doesn't literally mean look up. If you look up to someone, it means to admire and respect someone. So to admire and respect the person. For example, you could say her colleagues have always looked up to her. So they admire her. Maybe she's a great boss or a great employee. So another one on my list is own up to. And to own up to means to tell the truth or to admit that you are responsible for something. So basically people don't like to own up to things often, but you should. So example, no one has owned up to stealing the money. You can see stealing is in gerund. So no one has admitted to stealing the money. Let's have a look at the next one. Hang on to. And the meaning of hang on to is to hold tightly to something or to keep something. For example, when he tried to stand, he had to hang onto a tree for support. Or you should hang on to that painting 
it might be valuable. So you can see it means you know you have to either physically hold on to something or hang on to uh, in a bit more, not literally like you're keeping it, okay? All right, another one, add up to, add up to. So this is like a bit mathematical, no? To add up to. So the meaning is to basically make a particular amount, so when you put it together, or to have a particular effect or result. For example, you could say, the company's assets add up to 107 billion. So this is the complete total, you could say, of everything, okay? Another one is, these changes could add up to a 10 to 15% improvement in productivity. Okay, another one, feel up to. So the meaning of feel up to is basically to have the energy to do something. For example, you could say something like, look, I would love to come for drinks after work, but I just don't feel up to it today. And maybe the person's tired, they've been sick, or they've got a lot of work and they wanna go home, so they don't feel up to going for drinks. Okay, another one on my list is to put up to. Put up to. Basically, this means to encourage someone to do something which is usually wrong. For example, you could say, Sam skipped class on Friday. I think he was put up to it by his friends. So, so that basically means that his friends encouraged him to not go to class on Friday. That brings us to the end of this episode. So there you have some more three word phrasal verbs that I'm sure you will find useful to improve your understanding of native speakers. Now I hope you found this episode interesting. As always, if you have any questions, just send me an email, drop me a line on social media, send me a send pipe, or you can comment on the blog. Now, be sure to stick around for next week's installment of the last episode in this three-part mini-series on three-word prepositional phrasal verbs. And don't forget to enroll in one of my premium training programs. If you are serious about improving your business English, you can get all of the details on the website. I've got the a library of courses there. So why not have a look and uh, start your learning journey today? Well, that's it, people. I'll see you all next week on another episode of The Art of Business English. Bye for now.